So, hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm Radim, my name is Radim Vansa. I work as quality assurance engineer for the InfiniSpan project, which is a distributed NoSQL database uh, using Gigroups as a transport. So I'm going to talk about Gigroups. So what is actually Gigroups? Uh, just a question for the public. Uh, who is acquainted with Gigroups? Who has ever worked? Raise your hand. Not so many, but fine still. So Gigroups is a toolkit for re reliable communication. Uh, usual TCP sockets are uh, good for unicast, reliable, reliable communication, but Gigroups can handle uh, multicast and anycast as well, and all reliably. Uh, there are a couple of things it uh, has to uh, perform in order to achieve that. Uh, so uh, it has to discover new members in the uh, cluster and keep uh, information about that, um, handle a retransmission of lost messages, ordering in case you need uh, messages to be ordered, and uh, flow control in order to uh, prevent uh, flooding. Uh, it's not just about sending uh, and receiving messages. Uh, there's higher level API as well, which allows you to do request response matching or even a primitive form of IP RPC. Uh, Gigroups can be uh, deployed uh, locally or uh, I mean on local network or on a wide area network without any changes in uh, your application. It's everything is just about configuration, one simple configuration file which is tuned to uh, the particular network. So you have uh, really a great flexibility in deployment. Uh, Gigroups come uh, in a pretty simplistic distribution. It's a single jar which you can just add to the class path. Uh, it's in the Maven repository and has no another, uh, no more dependencies. So one single jar, Apache license number two. Let's look on the architecture of Gigroups a bit. So on the top is your application, which either can or does not have to use uh, building blocks, which is the higher level API. Uh, but it can also use the, uh, directly the J channel for sending and receiving messages. Uh, G-Channel is a stack of protocols. Uh, each protocol has a particular function, and these are just ordered uh, in some kind of stack. And in uh, the protocol, we speak only about sending uh, messages and events. Event, uh, event is, for example, crashing a node or a uh, new, new node joining. Uh, on the bottom, there is a transport, which is actually a protocol as well, but this can be shared and has kind of special function. Uh, so uh, below it, it just adapts to the regular uh, sockets or datagrams or the API for a communication which uh, JDK exposes. So transport, uh, there are uh, three implementations. Uh, it's a TCP adapting for regular TCP when, uh, for example, the multicast have to be sent multiple times. Uh, but sometimes your deployment requires only using TCP or UDP uh, and tunneling. Tunneling is uh, good uh, when you have the nodes in the cluster behind some routers or network translation or firewalls, uh, and you don't have any backward connection. So you just deploy one or more uh, routers, uh, like special application, uh, somewhere in the reachable location, and uh, tunneling uh, interconnects them. Uh, transport uh, handles batching when you send uh, uh, multiple messages in a fast succession or simultaneously. These can be uh, packed uh, into one message batch and sent uh, over the network, and this improves the performance. And uh, when uh, transport also receives messages and uh, dispatches them the, uh, to the thread post. There are three types of messages in JGroups. These are regular, which should be ordered, out of band, which does not have to, and some internal. For each of the message types, there's a, 
specific uh, thread pool. And uh, this is, for example, when when an application is not able to process the messages uh, as fast, it can deplete uh, under some conditions uh, the thread pools. But the G groups should still re react to some internal uh, stuff so that the node does not does not appear to be dead. So that's why uh, the we use uh, different uh, thread pools. And uh, when the thread pools are uh, depleted or all the threads are b b busy, uh, transport uh, can also use some queuing. So to the J channel, to the protocol stack, uh, there are several responsibilities that have to be handled in J groups. And um, each responsibility well, uh, and uh, in the stack, there are uh, many protocols, and but each protocol handles only one responsibility. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, this uh, allows uh, the flexibility in G groups because you can interchange the implementations of protocols very simply. These are independent, uh, although it's not really that independent. Uh, in practice, uh, there are uh, complicated interactions between the protocols. But in the, um, in the design, this is independent. So to the responsibilities. There's a discovery responsibility, which uh, when uh, no, a new node is spawned, it has to know uh, which other nodes are uh, around in the network. So it does discovery, either using mping, uh, which does sim uh, regular IP multicast over the network, uh, or TCP ping, TCP ping protocol, uh, which has a pre-configured set of well-known addresses. Uh, TCP gossip uses a uh, well-known router. In fact, this is the same router that can be used for the tunneling in transport. And there are really many others, such as uh, S3 ping for uh, Amazon Web Services, file ping when you have NFS, NFS storage, for example, or Samba, JDBC, and others. Uh, failure detection. That's a, often a problem uh, due to garbage collection, because uh, with uh, regular garbage collectors, the nodes can start um, garbage collecting for a few seconds. And then you don't know uh, whether the node is dead, whether it's crashed, or uh, whether it's just garbage collecting. And when you try to design some uh, near, near real-time application, uh, it's not really good that you have to uh, account the latent, possible latency of several seconds. Uh, but failure detection is handled by uh, two types of protocols, mostly. It's FD or FD all, which periodically sends heartbeats, and when the node does not receive heartbeat for uh, some uh, period, it uh, s starts suspecting the node. Uh, or FD SOC, which keeps a ring of sockets, of uh, TCP sockets, and uh, detect detects when the connection is broken down. Uh, this has advantage that uh, operating system uh, keeps the uh, TCP connection alive, uh, when the application is uh, garbage collecting, uh, and uh, when the application crashes, for example, it uh, the connection gets broken, but it does not get broken in a, uh, all situations. For example, when a router uh, between the nodes uh, crashes, uh, the, there's no communication over the TCP for this uh, cause and. Uh, the connection will time out only after a uh, large amount of time. And there's one more protocol, Verify Suspect, which uh, is kind of complementary because uh, it relies on the protocols, these, these below. And when, uh, when the node star is suspected, it sends him last, uh, sends to the node la last uh, chance message. So, hey, are you alive yet? And when it does not get any response, it, uh, it allows uh, him to be really suspected. A group membership. The GMS protocol handles, uh, handles uh, new joints of new uh, nodes, leaves, and crashes. 
And in order to do that, it keeps um, a list of uh, member nodes in the cluster, which is called a view. There's always one special node in the, no uh, in the view, which is called coordinator, uh, because this is the node which handles uh, the joints and leads. And uh, also, it can uh, have some special functionality in other protocols. So uh, the cluster is not totally uh, symmetric. There is one special node. Uh, sometimes you can uh, get a split brain. Uh, you can get a split partitions so that two parts of the cluster can communicate within the parts, but uh, but the other part is unreachable. And when the connection is uh, re-established between these. Uh, two, you have to, uh, the application have, uh, has to react upon uh, this. So there are three, uh, it's evolutionary, uh, evolutionary but the uh, three protocols which try to uh, find out which, uh, which node was in which part and how to handle that. And uh, then the application gets the merge view with the subnets or uh, subparts of the cluster. Retransmission and ordering. For unicast communication, uh, there, are, there is a unicast protocol actually in three versions. Uh, these three have in common that they add sequence number to each message. And uh, when it receives uh, the message, and the message should be ordered, uh, it waits until uh, all preceding ones are del delivered to the applications before delivering this one. Uh, so there are some buffers. And also for send messages, uh, it has to keep the uh, send message, uh, copy of the send message in memory because uh, when it gets lost, it has to retransmit it. So what's the difference? Unicast protocol, uh, this is the oldest one. It required all message to be separately acknowledged. Unicast, uh, but that has a performance impact by sending a lot of acknowledgements. So Unicast 2 uses only negative acknowledgements, but this has also some problems. As for the last message sent, uh, when, the, uh, when the node receives uh, message number 100, it can, uh, it can notice that uh, it uh, had not received uh, message 1 to 99, but, uh, and then it sends the negative acknowledgement. But when it receives uh, 1 to 99 and not 100, it does not know uh, that it should receive any more messages or that the message 100 should be retransmitted. So there's a stabilization message uh, sent from each node with highest received and uh, highest delivered num uh, sequence number. And uh, this is per periodically signed every while uh, to, to force the uh, last message to be uh, retransmitted if it's necessary. Uh, so the solution is unicast free, which uses cumulative acknowledgements. That means that uh, acknowledging message number 100 uh, uh, implicitly acknowledges all previous messages. And it has uh, limited overhead. The acknowledgement is sent uh, at most once a uh, half second. So the performance is not uh, uh, going down by the, uh, by the uh, often acknowledgements. It's conceptually, it's, it's more closer to the unicast first version. Uh, this is similar for uh, NECEC and NECEC 2 protocols for multicast messages, uh, which, as the name says, use only the neg negative acknowledgements. There is no version 3 yet. And uh, for ordered messages, it uses source ordering. That means that uh, messages sent from one node are uh, on another node received in the same order, but uh, there is no relation uh, in messages sent from different nodes. There are similar problems as for the Unicast 2, similar solution by stable protocol. 
Uh, yeah, one, one more thing I have not mentioned. Uh, another problem with negative acknowledgments is that the node does not know when the message uh, was delivered and that it can forget it in the buffers. Uh, so, uh, so the stabilization message has also uh, allowed the node to uh, drop uh, old messages uh, that it sent. Some applications require that uh, all messages are received in the s exactly same order on all nodes, and uh, this is solved by total ordering. Uh, there are uh, several approaches. The first one was sequencer, which just forwarded all messages to the coordinator, and uh, but, uh, the coordinator resent it to the rest of the cluster, but this is obvious performance impact, the coordinator is great bottleneck. Uh, so there was developed a new protocol, total order any cast, which works not only for multicast, but uh, any cast that, that means uh, the multicasting just to the part of the cluster. Uh, and this uses Skin's algorithm for distributed agreement upon the order in which the messages should be delivered. And I've also seen some presentation about external sequencer, just uh, one, spe uh, not node, but uh, deployed on another computer, and provided the sequence numbers, did not resend all messages, just the sequence numbers. Uh, so, but this was not yet integrated into G groups. Flow control. This is not required for TCP protocol because uh, this, uh, this handles it internally in the operating system. But for UDP, uh, you need to uh, you, you need to uh, reduce the sender uh, speed of sender uh, to match uh, receiver speed. So there are two protocols: unicast uh, flow control and multicast. Uh, these are really similar, and the algorithm is simple. You just keep a buffer of credits uh, on the sender node, and uh, well, one credit means sending uh, one byte, and the receiver tracks how many should the uh, should the sender uh, have, how many credits, and well, when it drops under some threshold, it sends him a replenishment of the credits. Uh, there's a problem with uh, lost messages that uh, the receiver cannot detect lost message uh, that uh, it should. So uh, when, it, uh, when the sender has too, uh, too low the credit account, it uh, asks for replenishment automatic, uh, it's uh, alone. Fragmentation, simple, just uh, G-groups can send, of course, larger messages than one packet or one frame, one whatever. So you want to fragment a big message into, uh, into several smaller messages. And uh, the older approach included message headers, so there was some marshalling involved, uh, but this was slower, so fragment, frag two fragments only uh, the payload, uh, the application data. Security is handled by auth protocol, which limits who can, which nodes can uh, join the cluster, and there are several uh, authorization, uh, authentication tokens. Uh, Authorization, sorry. Uh, so this is for either a simple passphrase sent over the network, uh, as the example, or uh, using an MD5 uh, hashing to secure the, the passphrase, Kerberos version 5, X509, uh, and there are yet more. So it, it depends on your deployment. Uh, and encrypt actually encrypts the uh, data you send the application data or even the, some G groups uh, headers, depending on your uh, on where you set up the encrypt protocol in the protocol stack, and uh, by default it uses AAS, and all nodes uh, have to keep a shared secret uh, to do the encryption. So it either uses JDK K store or a public private exchange. Both of these methods have some advantages and disadvantages. Relaying. Sometimes you have more complicated topology of the uh, of your network. For example, you have several um, local networks uh, distributed all over the globe, and you want to connect them via internet. So 
uh, but of course, uh, sending message from uh, one node, uh, well, within the within the local uh, network is much faster that than sending it over uh, internet. Uh, so uh, you keep uh, multiple clusters, uh, but uh, these are these are clustered. Some some of the members of the local clusters are uh, so-called uh, site masters, and uh, these form a different cluster using separate J channel, using different uh, configuration optimized for the uh, wide area networks. And, uh, but then you can still send the messages uh, from one node to another, but you're not bothered. Uh, when, when this node crashes, this cluster does not uh, have to know about it. So it has some advantages. Uh, and uh, and you can uh, also control uh, whether multicasts are uh, broadcasted all over the network, which ones, and so on. Uh, older version, just forget it. Relative is better. It allows some hierarchy of sites, uh, multiple side, side masters. Really, one allowed only one side master, and this is this is often a bottleneck in the system. And uh, handling whether the MCASs are um, forwarded. Simulation for uh, testing your application, how it will behave under certain network conditions. Uh, there, there are several protocols. You can test, for example, packet loss or total connection break, how the application will behave. Uh, so we have discard protocol, delay for simulating latency in the network, shuffle for reordering of messages. Now, let's go for the building blocks for the higher level API. Uh, this works, of course, for, uh, well, for unicast and all the, all the multicast com communication. There's a message dispatcher. This is the re uh, request response matching. You just uh, call a uh, cast message uh, somewhere, and uh, on the receiver side, you register some handler. This processes the message and returns an object. And this object is, uh, uh, is returned from the method call on the sender side. Uh, so this is pretty simple, but uh, when you have uh, multicast communication, you can set up whether you, want, uh, whether you don't want to respond at all, whether you want all responses from all nodes, or you can be satisfied by just first response. For example, when you're looking for something in the cluster, so who has it? And uh, the, the response will be the uh, same from all nodes. Or major, sorry, a majority to implement some kind of quorum. And uh, in uh, ggroups 3.3, there, uh, there is uh, a synchronous API, which returns just the future for the uh, object uh, for the response. Uh, RPC dispatcher is uh, similar, but you don't register a handler for the message, but you uh, call just invoke on uh, now method number, sorry, method, method name and arguments. And on the receiver side, you register object, and via, uh, the method is called on the object via reflection. And there's a synchronous API as well. Uh, there are more uh, stuff in the building blocks. Some of them require special uh, protocols to be inserted into the configuration uh, in the stack. Uh, so this is uh, either cluster-wide task execution. You just send some runnable to, to the network and let it be executed. Atomic counters, distributed logs, uh, keeping uh, some state shared in the application, uh, this is for simple use case, mostly. So uh, the changes in some objects can be replicated automatically over the, uh, to all cluster members, or even some primitive form of replicated hash map. But this is experimental uh, stuff altogether. Uh, the building blocks. Uh, this this part is not that well tested. Uh, G groups configuration and statistics. 
Uh, this is an example how a configuration can look like it. Uh, you can see that it may seem a bit complicated, but you can uh, tune everything. So um, usually you just set up the configuration uh, in XML file. You can use programmatic uh, configuration and uh, insert the protocols, uh, new protocols, uh, or remove them on the fly. And uh, both the configuration and stat statistics, uh, each protocol can report some statistics. Uh, you can, uh, th these are exposed via JMX. You don't have to con uh, connect to each node in the cluster um, via J J console to retrieve the statistics. There's a tool called probe. You just type probe sh and uh, you find out all no all clusters in the new fork nearby. Uh, retrieve JMX information from all protocols in all nodes, and so on. So where are G groups used? Uh, G groups are used uh, as the transport layer in uh, caches such as InfiniSpan or Terracotta EH cache. It's not the Terracotta. Uh, servers, but each cache, uh, like embedded solution, can use ggroups as a transport. There are another caches uh, for clustering in JBoss application server or uh, another application server. Honestly, uh, I haven't tested all these uh, or tried out uh, all these applications. This is from ggroups success stories. So, uh, HTTP session replication in some servers or group communication um, in, for example, in Apache ActiveMQ. Uh, you can do JMS and use JGroups as the transport layer, or there's some implementation of failure tolerant CORBA, uh, which uses, again, JGroups as the communication layer. Uh, you may ask, what's the difference between JGroups and uh, JMS? JMS is actually higher level than uh, JGroups, and you have um, kind of limited API. So uh, this uh, JMS can use JGroups. There's actually, in the building blocks, uh, an implementation of the Stomp protocol for JMS. Uh, but again, this is other stuff. So advantages and disadvantages. JGroups is extremely flexible in deployment, in configuration. Um, you, can, you can change basically anything. Uh, it's scalable. It was tested on 1,500 nodes. Actually, this test just spawned the nodes and uh, checked that uh, these were properly clustered. But, for example, I have tested uh, JGroups on a cluster with 256 nodes, and it simply worked. No problems so far. Uh, writing protocols for the JGroups, if you want to um, contribute, it's really simple. Uh, for example, I had to write a simulation of partitioning uh, in the cluster, and uh, this was 10 lines of code. You, uh, each protocol is simple interface. Uh, you implement the method for passing message, uh, for receiving message from uh, the lower protocol, from the upper protocol, and that's all. You can add your own header storm messages. And, uh, but the f flexibility is also um, disadvantage. Sometimes people say that it's complex to configure. The mm, default configuration works pretty well, uh, but sometimes you just uh, don't get the nodes clustered and you don't know what, what to do with it. Uh, because it's, um, uh, then you start looking at the trace logs and find out that you have set up some multicast uh, address wrong or that you have another problem in the network. Uh, but it's not that easy to detect. It's not that you would uh, set up JGroups and every, uh, every time it works very closely. But JGroups is also mature. Uh, JGroups has been around uh, since, well, the development started in 1998 uh, by rewriting uh, some academic uh, uh, framework from, I think it was some kind of Lisp or uh, what this was written in, uh, but Balaban has re rewritten uh, it into Java, so it was called Java Groups, and 
Uh, then later, I think 2005, uh, it uh, became uh, became uh, J groups and uh, was actually productized. And uh, it is uh, widely adapted, as I've seen, uh, as I've uh, presented. There are many applications which use J groups in production. So, what can you expect in the future for J groups? Uh, it's using of NIO2, new uh, input output uh, stuff in JDK. So, uh, because now JGroups has to copy the buffers from out of sockets uh, before passing it to the application, and this can uh, slow down it a bit. So, we expect that uh, using direct buffers uh, can improve performance. And you can also do, do the scatter gather inside. And uh, we hope that sometime uh, InfiniBand will be supported. Uh, but uh, so far, there's no uh, native implementation in Java. There are JNI implementations of InfiniBand support. Uh, but uh, JGroups does not want any dependencies. So. Um, as soon as GDK API will be available, I think the InfiniBand support will be good pretty soon. In fact, GDK has support for InfiniBand by uh, faking the InfiniBand as some uh, TCP sockets, but uh, uh, I mean here uh, native InfiniBand support. So, do you have some questions about you? Yeah. Yeah, InfiBand uh, is uh, alternative to uh, Ethernet. It's a protocol, oh, not a protocol. <coughs> it's a uh, network which uh, has a much lower latency than uh, Ethernet. It, can, uh, it has also higher throughput. It, this is used for high performance computing mostly. The, the network is not cheap, it's kind of expensive. <laughs> Well, uh, the only tool so far I know is the probe, uh, but this is probably more uh, targeted at uh, those who, uh, who know uh, about uh, G-groups more, but I don't know about any plans for, uh, for end users to sim simplify it. Sorry. Yeah? Yeah, so the question was uh, how to make uh, two clusters in the same network. Uh, it's actually pretty simple. You just set up different multicast address in the configuration. Uh, then nodes have to know about each other. So, for example, when you don't use multicast at all, you, uh, for example, you, you use uh, TCP uh, ping, which has the well-known set of addresses in the configuration. You just uh, use the disjoint sets. Of course, you, you can have, uh, the application can use multiple channels, and each channel uh, should have a separate uh, multicast. Oh. Not, not completely sure, but I think uh, each protocol should have uh, separate uh, multicast ports set up. So, uh, setting different uh, ports or addresses. Yeah? If there's a capability to modify configuration on the fly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Will you prevent that somebody uh, don't inject this protocol into production environment and destroy the performance of the network? Well, uh, there's no security uh, inside. It's uh, just uh, maybe just by not uh, by uh, not uh, exposing the API in the application. Uh, but uh, 
uh, regarding security, there is only uh, sorry, uh, there is only one option to not expose the JMX or uh, allow some other stuff. There is uh, enable diagnostics uh, parameter, which is required for uh, the probe to work. Uh, so no, there uh, there is no uh, such kind of security, and there's. Uh, yeah, that there's the authorization and uh, encryption, but uh, from the application, uh, really no. So, if you don't have any more questions, I thank you for uh, for coming so early <laughs> today, and I hope you'll use J Groups soon. <laughs> you tried it out. Here are some links. You just put G groups into uh, Google and you'll find out. Yeah, we just...